Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku discovered Toga's secret admiration for Damai part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. There was a young black man walking down the street heading to his apartment. He was carrying some bags with some food. It took him about 10 minutes until he finally arrived. His apartment was not in the best condition nor was it very big. It only had a bathroom and a room that he had to use as a living room, kitchen and bedroom. It had a small refrigerator, an oven, a sink, and a microwave that barely worked. This was his kitchen. His living room and bedroom was a green sofa bed that he had in the corner and in front of it was a small TV that he had stolen. Although where she lived was not the best place, but she couldn't ask for much, since he was one of the most wanted villains in the country. He had to live in hiding, but he already lived here before joining the League of Villains. He left the things he brought in the refrigerator and sat on the couch and turned on the TV to see if he found anything interesting. Nothing. It was the only thing he said while watching TV he spent a few minutes flipping through channels and the only interesting thing for him was a report they were doing on Hero Number 1. He stayed looking at it while feeling hatred at the same time. A few minutes passed when he received a message from a certain blonde telling him, come to the lair immediately. He missed that message, but he had nothing better to do and he headed to the lair. Once there he went to the bar where Kirajiri was cleaning the glasses. Dabai, what a surprise to see you here at this time. I'm wondering the same. Can I serve you something? Whatever it is fine the portal quirk took out a black bottle that was covered in dust and poured the contents into some glasses. Cheers. They both said at the same time while they clinked the glasses and ingested the contents. Dabai, what are you doing here? Shigaraki said entering the room, I thought you were in your apartment. The crazy woman told me to come, but I don't know why. Where is she? I think he's in his room. By hearing that, the black man already knew where to go. He got up and walked towards said room. He stopped in front of the door and started knocking on it until he got an answer. A few seconds passed when the blonde opened it while she had her typical sadistic smile on her face. What do you want? Dabai said dryly. Toga didn't say anything. He just held Dabai's hands and put him in his room. Toga's room was somewhat extravagant. There were clothes thrown all over the floor, she had some decapitated stuffed animals, knives stuck in the walls and a bed that never seemed to fit. What do you want? The jet repeated I don't want to be alone, Toga said quickly. There are literally five more people in this place. Tell one of them, Dabai said dryly about to open the door. But a hand stopped him, yes, but I want you to be the one with me, the blonde said in a pleading tone. Dabai turned to look at her sigh. Toga took that as a yes from the raven. What do we do? Dabai asked. Make yourself comfortable, the blonde said, still smiling. Dabai obviously didn't understand what she was referring to and she realized that. She grabbed his jacket and took it off and then put it on a chair he had. Then she told him to take off his shoes and he did. Ready, was the only thing Toga said before lying down on her bed and arranging the space on the edge for the raven to lie down. Dabai was left wondering whether to do it or not. In the end he did it. What was the worst that could happen? Good night. The blonde said before falling asleep as she settled into the raven's neck and fell deeply asleep. Dabai stared at her for a few seconds as he thought. Of the entire league she was the only one he didn't dislike so much and could tolerate to a certain point. That's why he allowed them to do things like this. Good night, idiot, he said before wrapping her in his arms and burying his face in the blonde's hair. It took a few minutes until they were both fast asleep, but four heads appeared out of nowhere in Toga's room. It was Kirajiri, Shigaraki, and Spinner who were watching the scene their other members were making. They watched them for a few seconds and then left. I told them they liked each other, Spinner said, Toga may like Dabai, but he doesn't seem to feel the same way about her. I was hugging her, it's obvious, Shigaraki said, be that as it may, that relationship will only create problems, Kirajiri said to close the conversation. The next day, the blonde was the first to wake up. The first thing she saw was the stapled man sleeping peacefully while he hugged her. She wanted to adjust herself a little more to be at the same height as the raven man's face, but in her attempt she woke him up. What time is it? Dabai asked, yawning. You don't say hello or anything, the blonde said angrily but without letting go. Hello Toga, what time is it? The blonde let go of Dabai's arms to look for her cell phone. It's almost 9 am, he said showing him the cell phone screen. It's the first time I've slept so much, the raven man said, getting out of bed while putting on his jacket and shoes. I'll be honest, I wouldn't mind repeating it. That last one increased Toga's blush to a high level, and her psychopathic smile had changed to one that was a little more tender. You could say tender, but the fangs still left her looking crazy. Do you have something to do tonight? Toga asked. Yes, Dabai said quickly. In addition to burning people, then no, do you want us to go on a date? Asked the blonde on the edge of the bed. Appointment. The jet black man thought for a few seconds, of course, I don't see why not. 
The blonde smiled more at that moment. She wanted to say something else but Dabai had already left the room. Toga was very excited. She had to do many things before her appointment. The first thing was to have breakfast. He went to the kitchen and in the refrigerator he grabbed some milk and cereal from the carton, mixed it and sat down in one of the chairs. She was eating alone for a few minutes until the leader of the league entered. Hello man Mono, Toga said waving his hand in greeting. How many times have I told you not to call me that? Shigaraki said irritated. I don't know, many. Anyway, why did you call Dabai yesterday? I asked curious even knowing the truth, couple's affairs, the blonde said, leaving the room. That perplexed the grey-haired man. He knew that the blonde was crazy. Therefore he didn't know if she was telling the truth or not, he decided not to give it much importance. As Toga walked to her room she ran into another league member. Hello Toga. Hello twice. Guess what I'm doing tonight, said the blonde, showing her fangs. I give up, of course not. I'm going out with a handsome boy, she said while jumping with twice. With me, asked the masked man. No, I'm going out with Dabai and I have to hurry, see you that perplexed twice. He had had feelings for Toga for a long time. He didn't know if she felt the same for him. But one thing was clear, he didn't want anyone else to have her, much less Dabai. While with Dabai, he was walking back to his apartment. It lasted a few minutes. Once he entered, he opened the refrigerator and took out a can of soda from the bag he had left the night before and sat on the couch. He watched TV for a while until he received a message from the blonde, which it said, You, me, mall, 6 p.m. He didn't know if Toga was joking or not by going out to such a public place, but he didn't think anything of it. He started thinking about what to do on his date, since it was the first one he was going to have. Because of his appearance everyone avoided him and didn't talk to him. But he noticed that the blonde didn't care about his burned skin. He could even say that Toga liked that. He hated to accept it but Toga was attractive in her own crazy way. After showering he basically put on black clothes and a jacket with a black hat that covered his face. He ate some fast food that he had saved for lunch and left the apartment. Hours passed and he sat on a bench in front of the shopping center to wait for the blonde. A few minutes passed until he felt hands covering his eyes. Who I am? Said the blonde, someone who would take out my organs and use them as clothes, he said jokingly. I wouldn't do that to you. Maybe, he said that last thing in a low voice. Let's go to our date. Toga grabbed Dabai's hand and basically dragged him into the mall. They walked around for a while until Toga saw the first thing they could do. Let's go there Dabai, she said like a girl while pointing to the place. Let's go please. Dabai was shocked. It was a game store that gave out prizes. He was sure Toga was serious about entering. He was hesitating, but an idea occurred to him that could benefit him. Do you want to make it interesting? She said with a smile. What are you taking about? The blonde asked confused. The one who scores the most points in all the games is the winner. And the loser will do what the winner wants. Toga smiled when she heard that. The two psychopaths had planned what to do to the other in case they won. They came in and started playing. There were shooting games. Shooting games. Some consoles. Dabai wouldn't admit it but she was having a good time with Toga. They had been in almost every game. And Dabai was beating Toga by a little over 2,500 points. But the next game would be the last, since they didn't want to stay in that store the entire game. Either you hit all the shots, or I win, said the jet black almost with victory in his hand. Shut up or I'll cut you off while you sleep, the blonde said in a threatening tone. Dabai stepped back and let her concentrate, but on the first attempt she failed. The victory belonged to the jet black and the blonde knew it. You won, what do you want me to do? I'll tell you when the time comes, he said smiling. Toga had a bad feeling. But she didn't give it any more importance and dragged Dabai to the next place, a movie theater. This is a couple's thing, I think, Dabai said scratching his head. And, we are not. Still, that, the jet black man asked, confused. Let's go in, she said, grabbing Dabai's hand again and dragging him to buy the tickets while she bought the food. They entered the room, they had not planned it, but they got the seats at the back of the room, where no one would see them. This is uncomfortable, Dabai said. You don't like the quote, Toga asked sadly. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to the seat. I think it's broken. Get up the raven man stood up and Toga did the same. She told him to sit in the other seat and he did. Seconds later she sat on his lap. This is better, said the jet black man, smiling. I know, the blonde said smiling too. When the movie started, Toga placed her head on Dabai's right shoulder and he put his arm around her. They were like that for almost the entire movie. When leaving the shopping center, see you Toga. Wait, what's going on? Dabai said stopping in his tracks. Are you seriously going to let an innocent young girl be alone at this time of night? You can kill anyone who tries to touch you, goodbye. You do not get it, that. I want to go with you to your apartment, because, we have been friends for a long time. And I have never been in your apartment, but you have been in my room, it doesn't seem fair to me. If I say yes, can we go? The blonde nodded, okay, let's go. Toga held Dabai's hand again and they headed to their apartment, although the path for a normal person was dangerous and in the first block she could have already been assaulted, 
They had no problem since they were recognized and feared. Once they arrived, Toga was surprised by the place. I know it's shit, but it's the only thing I have. What are you taking about? It's fabulous. You have your own TV and your own bathroom, the blonde said fascinated, and your room. We are already in it. Toga didn't understand what he meant. Dabai approached the sofa and by removing the cushions and holding it he turned it into a bed, which left Toga even more fascinated. This is all my room. The place is very small so get used to it. I will do it. The blonde said smiling. Can you lend me a shirt? So that. Don't you expect me to sleep in these clothes? Whatever. Dabai said as he grabbed a shirt that was on the couch and gave it to Toga who went into the bathroom to change. Dabai, for his part, only padlocked the front door and closed the curtain once Toga left. She was wearing the shirt that Dabai had lent her. Since he was much taller than her, the shirt looked like a robe, so he knew that she was only wearing the shirt. Not to mention that she had untied her buns and let herself natural hair Dabai lay down on the couch. Then Toga did the same, only she hugged him and clung to his chest. I had a lot of fun today Dabai, thank you. It was the last thing the blonde said before falling deeply asleep. Thanks to you. Toga it was the last thing the jet black man said before wrapping her in his arms and falling asleep. The next morning, the raven boy was the first to wake up. He noticed how Toga was hugging him and drooling. He couldn't say that he was upset. Toga seemed adorable to him when she was asleep. Being careful not to wake her up he got up and went to take a shower. When the door came out, blonde was still sleeping he didn't care if he left her in his apartment. He didn't care if she stole, he didn't have anything of value, so he just left. After a few hours, Toga woke up and realized that Dabai was not there. Why does he always do this? The blonde thought a little sadly. It wasn't the first time Dabai had done this, and if she didn't do something she knew it would keep happening. She lay there thinking for a few minutes, until an idea occurred to her, but she needed help. He showered and quickly went to the league's den as soon as she entered she went directly to the bar and found those who could help her. Hen man, Kirajiri I need help. What's wrong Toga? Asked the purple one. I need to make a plan to have Dabai? Have? What are you talking about? I suppose that Handman has never had a partner, but I assume that Kirajiri has. That's why I need your help, Maldita Mucus. We will help you in any way we can, Kirajiri said. The three began to come up with a plan so that Toga could spend some time with Dabai. With Dabai, this one was in an alley. He was just leaning against a wall doing nothing. Suddenly the phone started ringing. I managed to see who it was. What do you want? Hey, I need you and Toga to go on a little mission, Shigaraki said. Toga, it's okay, he responded resignedly. What should be done? Shigaraki gave the instructions to Dabai. But he was totally confused by the instructions, especially about where they should go. Everything ready. Toga will meet you there in two hours the call ended. Dabai didn't give it any more importance and stayed there for a while longer, until it was time he would leave. When the time came, Dabai was waiting on a bench near the entrance to a forest. He really didn't see the point in this mission. There you are, said a voice near him. You finally arrive luck. Dabai couldn't finish his sentence when he saw how Toga was dressed. The blonde was wearing a low-cut pink shirt with black stripes that highlighted her assets, along with a black skirt that was equally low-cut for her curves. Her buns were better combed than how she usually has them, and she was wearing makeup. Dabai's eyes widened just seeing her. Have you been waiting a long time? The blonde asked, getting closer to Dabai. The raven's heart began to beat faster with each step the blonde took towards him. Come on, the blonde asked. CL clear the blonde hugged Dabai's left arm and they started walking. The plan was to make them both wait for some guys who were going to meet them to join the league, which did not exist. It was to give them time alone in a romantic place, which was a forest. After a few minutes they sat on a bench. Dabai, no matter how much he tried to hide, couldn't take his eyes off Toga. When will these guys arrive? The jet asked with a nervous voice. I don't know. Are you hungry? Dabai saw that Toga took out a smoothie from a backpack and put a straw in it. Where did you? Want? Sure, he responded confused. When she began to take notice, Toga put another straw for her to drink as well. Their faces were very close at that moment. After a few minutes passed, they continued talking. Dabai increasingly realized that Toga was not as childish as he thought, and that she was very cute in her own way, crazy and psychotic. I'm going to burn Shigaraki the next time I see him. Don't say that. It's not their fault the guys cancelled at the last minute. Yes, that could be. Wait, what did you say? Toga knew at that moment that she had screwed up. What do you mean by that? Did you know they weren't going to come? Dabai asked angrily. It's not that. It's that. The blonde was getting nervous. The nice night she spent with Dabai would be ruined by that comment. A few seconds ago I received a message from Man Mono that said that Dabai was left doubting. He was not convinced. Can I see the message? The jet black man asked, staring at Toga. The somewhat worried blonde gave him the phone. Dabai grabbed it and looked for the message. You're right, we better go, Dabai said, returning the phone and starting to walk. Toga looked at her phone confused and saw that if there was a message from Shigaraki, she didn't understand anything. 
Hey. Someone whispered Toga looked back and saw that Kirajiri and Shigaraki were behind them, hiding among the trees. You owe me one, the gray-haired one whispered. Toga gave them a thumbs up in thanks and ran towards Dabai. Put this on, the jet black man said, giving him his jacket. I don't want you to get sick and blame me. Thank you, the blonde said giving him a kiss on the cheek. That left Dabai completely frozen. It was the first form of affection I had received in years. Are you coming or staying? Toga asked. Go a few days after the date that the blonde and the raven had. Things had progressed considerably between them. You could say that they became best friends. In the present, Dabai was driving to a location that they had been assigned to go to get some information. We are about to arrive. Toga asked like a girl. No five minutes later. We are about to arrive. He asked again. No, Dabai was getting irritated. Ten minutes later. We are about to arrive. If you continue like this, you will never get there. Toga pouted and stayed silent the rest of the way. It was a few minutes until they reached a factory that looked abandoned. What is this place Dabai? It's very dark, Toga asked confused, looking around. According to Shigaraki, the black man said while turning on the light, it's the Nomis factory when the lights turned on. They could see the brains protruding from the tanks, which almost made Toga vomit, especially because of the smell that the place emitted. It smells horrible. Toga covered her mouth with her hands to prevent herself from vomiting. What did you expect? They are corpses and brains in a liquid. Dabai touched the liquid they were submerged in. I have no idea what I just touched. Don't touch me until you wash your hand, Toga claimed. Anyway, what exactly do we have to do? We have to. Dabai took out the to-do list and started reading it. Check the advancement levels of the Nomis Toga was confused. But just by seeing what Dabai did she understood it. It was basically seeing the level they had written down on the screen and reviewing the one they had last week, which was written down right in a notebook. I can't believe these things can be as strong as all might. Dabai said, reviewing the papers, they're also very ugly. It doesn't matter. Toga took his hand, I like ugly things. Dabai stopped and looked at her. He didn't know whether to take that as a compliment or an insult, maybe a little of both. Anyway, he said, somewhat annoyed by the blonde's comment. It seems that everyone has advanced a little, but not enough. Shigaraki is not going to like this, heading towards the door. But before Toga came out he grabbed him. Arm, what? Well, we don't have to go back to the lair yet. Do you prefer to spend time near these gnomas in process? No, we could go to the roof to hang out. It's better than going back to the base to listen to Hand Man talk about getting revenge on those UA brats. I support you in that they both climbed some stairs behind the factory and reached the roof. We're here, now what? Dabai asked looking up at the sky. Toga didn't respond. All she did was lean on the edge of the roof barrier and look at the city. Dabai didn't know what to do and just slowly approached her. Although the ceiling was not very high, you could see much of the city very well. Very cute, don't you think? Toga asked looking at the city. I thought you liked ugly things, Dabai said, somewhat annoyed but joking. Not all of them, you are the exception, Toga's blush increased again, insult or flattery. This time it was more of a compliment. T thank you, Dabai stuttered, looking at the blonde. She felt the jet's gaze and turned to look at him. His turquoise eyes and her yellow eyes met, they couldn't stop seeing each other. Dabai didn't know why, but he was slowly leaning towards the blonde's face. She was simply surprised and stood on the tips of her feet, and it all ended. With a kiss, the heat that he transmitted through her body increased and she felt it. Toga, being so short, surrounded the raven with her arms around his neck. Dabai didn't know what to do and grabbed Toga by the hips and lifted her up. She crossed her legs around him and deepened the kiss. After a few seconds they both separated completely blushing. Toga more. That was. The words didn't come out to Dabai. Tasty, Toga said. The two of them didn't speak to each other the entire way back to the hideout, which was very awkward in the car. What is happening to me? He thought darkly while he was lying on the sofa bed in his apartment. The only thing he had on his mind was the blonde. Since they had that kiss, Toga was the only one on his mind. No matter what I did I couldn't think about anything else no matter what I did. 8. Toga I was drinking something. Toga I watched TV. Toga. He burned people. Toga he didn't know why, but as he thought about her, his heart was racing faster than normal. That crazy woman did something to me. I'll go ask her what the hell it is. Dabai grabbed his jacket and headed to the only place where he could find the blonde, the league's lair. He decided to walk away to try to clear his mind, but he just couldn't get the blonde out of his thoughts. While with Toga, he was in his room playing darts with knives. He had a photo of Dabai and with the knives he made a heart around the photo, you will be mine whether you want it or not. After continuing to play darts for a few minutes he got hungry. He went out to look for food and realized that there was no one in the den. He grabbed the first thing he saw in the refrigerator which was half a sandwich. Without thinking he took it and began to eat. Eat it, vegetarian. He spat out the sandwich. That's disgusting. 
As he went back to look for something better, he heard the front door open and close quickly. Intruders Toga grabbed a knife and prepared to attack that person who entered. As soon as he opened the kitchen door, Toga put his knife to his neck. Seconds later he realized that it was Jet. Oh Dabai. Toga blushed more. What are you doing here? Why is my heart racing too fast? She thought darkly when she saw the blonde in front of him. What did you do to me? What are you talking about? Toga asked confused. I can't stop thinking about you crazy. Since we kissed I can't stop thinking about you. Toga blushed more at the words Dabai had just said. It worked. My plan worked. Toga thought happily. And that is bad. Toga was trying to see how much she had gotten into Dabai's head. Yeah. I say no. I don't know without hesitation. Toga attached the jet of his shoulders and made him lean so that they could kiss again. She felt their tongues join together and he grabbed her legs and then lifted her into his arms and then she wrapped her legs around his waist. The moment they separated to breathe, a thread of saliva remained hanging from their mouths. Delicious, Toga said licking her lips, do you still have doubts? Then Dabai without thinking grabbed her and took her to his room and locked the door. I want you to be mine, here and now lemon content warning. After closing the door, Dabai continued kissing Toga deeply and licking the inside of her mouth, joining his tongue with hers. Toga only held him tightly by the neck and held him tightly with her legs which were tied around his body. After a few seconds they separated to breathe again while a thread of saliva came out of their mouths. You know better than you look, Toga said as she smiled and looked him in the eyes in a perverse way. Dabai saw the saliva coming out of the blonde's mouth which fell on her neck, which Dabai began to lick and kiss wildly, which made Toga moan his name loudly. While the jet was focused on her neck, Toga quickly took off her shirt, exposing her breasts, which Dabai smiled wickedly at when he saw them. They are bigger than they look, Dabai commented, who separated himself from her neck and began to lick and bite Toga's breasts fiercely and passed his hand inside the shorts that the blonde was wearing and quickly massaged her panties. Toga moaned his name louder, while her panties were already beginning to get wet from the liquids that came out of her vagina and her blush increased on a large scale as she looked at the raven. Have you gotten wet yet? Dabai asked, taking out her fingers which were wet and licking them in front of her, which made her wetter. It feels much better than when I do it to myself Toga thought, completely wet. It was the first time someone made her come. She always did it alone in her room with her own hands, but never in as much quantity as now. Dabai watched as Toga's eyes reflected the great pleasure she was having. Without hesitation he ripped off Toga's panties and put three of his fingers inside the blonde's vagina and began to move them in and out quickly, which did Toga moaned and screamed louder with pleasure. After a few seconds Toga came again much more than before. Dabai after making her come again made her lick her own vaginal juices from his fingers. My taste is delicious, Toga mentioned while deeply licking Dabai's fingers. Then sitting on him and starting to kiss him again while she was on top of him she began to move her hips against his which made Toga feel like something was rubbing underneath her. I know you're very hot Dabai. And not because of your quirk, Toga mentioned when she felt Dabai's bulge between her legs, to which Dabai just looked at her perversely. Toga slowly opened Dabai's pants and put her hand inside and grabbed the raven's erect member and began to rub it up and down slowly while drooling at the large size of what was about to enter inside her. Put it in your mouth, Dabai ordered as he looked at Toga, who obeyed and began to quickly lick his cock, while she was licking and sucking. Dabai took off his jacket and shirt revealing his thin body with burned skin that was held together by staples. I like it Toga thought while licking. But at a certain point Dabai held her head and made her choke while he continued licking. They continued like this for several minutes. Let's get to the real fun. Dabai said holding Toga's head and then lifting her up and kissing her quickly. Do you prefer to be on top or on the bottom? Above after hearing that. Dabai lay down on the bed and helped her get on the bed so that he could put his cock inside her vagina and start moving up and down while moaning her name. He for his part enjoyed the internal heat of the blonde's vagina while he took her by the hips which Toga did not stop moving while she moved. At that moment Dabai grabbed Toga's breasts and pressed them hard while she moaned louder and came again on Dabai. I I want to go D down now, was what he said between interruptions while breathing heavily. Dabai smiled and they changed positions, putting her on all fours on the bed while he moved and pulled her hair. W when do I untie my bows? The blonde asked, excited and surprised. To tell the truth, he wanted her to position herself differently, but being much shorter than him, Toga's body did not have the desired curve, but that did not prevent him from enjoying the view of Toga's but that hit against his pelvis, and she couldn't resist pressing him hard and hitting him, which made her scream with pleasure as he moved faster and put his hands on her mouth which she licked as he came again. After that, Dabai couldn't hold out much longer. For one last position, he turned Toga around to look into her eyes and then put her legs on his shoulders while he penetrated her quickly and she moaned his name louder. To prevent her from screaming so much, he kissed her and she bit her lip until it bled and sucked the blood that came out, which didn't bother him. 
Neither of them could hold on anymore. They had reached the climax of the moment and ended up coming on and inside each other and then falling on the bed totally sweaty and exhausted. That was. It was. Better than I could imagine. Toga mentioned, catching his breath, and I have imagined it several times. They both stared into each other's eyes for several seconds. And then she snuggled into his chest and he hugged her. Your mind dabai it was the last thing Toga said before falling asleep soundly in his arms. You two are mind dabai gave a small smile without evil and hugged her more until he fell asleep. Unfortunately they weren't the only ones in the lair. The next day, both the blonde and the raven were still sleeping naked. Until she moved and accidentally hit dabai's face, making him wake up. Crazy idiot. Dabai muttered. Getting up and putting on his boxers, pants and shirt, he was hungry so he decided to go to the kitchen where he found Shigaraki and Kirajiri who were having breakfast. Hello they both looked at the staple boy with some discomfort, something that did not go unnoticed by him. What do you see me? Do I have something on my face? Dabai asked annoyed. If there was something he hated it was being stared at. Dabai, I'm not interested in you and the crazy brat being a couple. Dabai raised an eyebrow. Next time you fuck, do it in your apartment. A motel, a cemetery, a pain room or wherever it is except here in the den, Shigaraki commented annoyed. Both he and Kirijiri were in the lair and heard all the moaning from the blonde. Shigaraki tried to use his hands to cover his ears. But since his room was next to Toga's, it was almost impossible not to hear her. Whatever, the raven man said without interest at Shigaraki's request. He didn't care where he would fuck the blonde, saying that he returned to the room where Toga was wearing only his jacket. Do I look pretty? The blonde asked, modeling her jacket. I prefer to see you without her toga bit her lower lip knowing what he meant. Where do you want us to do it tonight? Two nights in a row. I thought you guys didn't like to do it so often. I'm not like the others. Toga mentioned with a psychotic smile. That's what I like about you. He muttered to himself. That idiot Shigaraki heard us last night. He didn't know he was here. I do. Dabai didn't know whether to get angry. He didn't care. As far as he was concerned, Toga was his, and if someone touched her he wouldn't hesitate to burn even that person's ashes. Today we will do it in a cemetery. Dabai smiled perversely. The idea of the cemetery sounded interesting. The blonde could only imagine her with her naked body while they were doing it on someone's grave. And it turned her on more if the grave had been recently made. However, although they didn't know, there was another person who heard everything that had happened the night before. Twice after hearing the blonde's moans he couldn't help but get angry, since he wanted Toga to be his and not Dabai's. So he devised a plan, not to win over Toga, to make them hate each other. Create a clone of Toga and hypnotize him thanks to the quirk of one of his friends, and make him kiss another clone of someone else in front of Dabai. Perfect seamless plan, said the masked man looking in front of a mirror. At nightfall the two lovers, boyfriends were walking on the street, with only the moonlight illuminating them as they headed to the cemetery holding hands. Can I choose the grave on which we will make it? The blonde asked, looking at him with emotion. Whatever you want, you are the one who will be on her. They arrived at the cemetery and Toga was looking for the perfect grave to fuck on it. After a few minutes she found one in the center of the cemetery, that, that, Sir Night I dab I read the name of the deceased. What does it matter? Take off your panties. Toga excitedly sat on the edge of the grave and took off her panties, throwing them on the floor and Dabai inserted his member inside her, which began to moan. They were making noise for several minutes until a light illuminated them. It was one of the guards patrolling. What are they doing? The guard shouted. What do we seem to do? Dabai said without stopping moving. He's making a lot of noise. Dabai, let's kill him, Toga commented, breathing quickly. It's okay, princess. Dabai smiled and separated from Toga and zipped up his pants. Toga got excited and blushed. It was the first time someone called her that way, and she loved it. She pulled out a knife from her long stockings and quickly stabbed the guard in the throat, killing him instantly so that Dabai would then burn the body until they were gone. Ashes, shall we continue? The blonde asked. Let's go to my apartment instead. There we can make so much noise without anyone bothering us. Toga smiled at this idea and took his hand. While they were halfway there he began to feel cold in his legs and remembered why. Dabai, I forgot something, she said in a tone similar to that of a girl who left her homework at home. What did you forget? My panties in the cemetery as the weeks went by. Both the raven man and the blonde had consolidated into a relationship. You could call it that. It was more wild sex anywhere and at any time, although neither showed it, they had feelings for the other more. Their only pleasure. The league didn't care about the relationship as long as it didn't affect future plans. But there was one member who didn't agree, twice. He had feelings for the blonde, but she had apparently ignored them or simply had not understood him, and it bothered him that she had preferred the human incinerator. It was one of the many nicknames by which Dabai was referred to. Although his head was divided, he managed to balance it temporarily to develop a plan that would separate them. He had Toga's measurements since they had used several clones in some missions, and luckily several of his friends could help him carry out his plan. 
One morning he made a clone of Toga, who with the help of one of his friends was hypnotized with the only order to deceive Dabai with another of twice his friends. Are you sure this will work twice? Asked his hypnotist friend. Of course, look at my big plan. Twice showed a drawing he made with crayons where he and Toga were seen wrapped in a big heart surrounded by small hearts. Perfect seamless plan after that explanation. Each one went to their positions. Twice would be with the original Toga in the lair so as not to raise suspicion. The hypnotist would be outside Dabai's apartment waiting for the moment when he came out to send a message to start with the plan. After a few minutes the black man came out with a black sweatshirt that covered part of his face and was looking at his phone. Today we will do it at the abandoned motel. I like how you think Toga she realized that this time he called her by her name. Not by any of the usual nicknames. He simply shook his head and continued on his way. He continued walking straight for about six blocks without noticing the hypnotist on the other side of the street. He called for them to do it in an alley that was two blocks away from them. As Dabai walked near there, he heard some familiar sounds and headed into the alley. He slowly approached to see. When Toga's clone kissed another guy. Whom Dabai had never seen before, he felt a pain in his chest and backed away a little and hid behind a wall so they wouldn't see him. He felt an urge to burn them alive, but for some reason he couldn't raise his hand against Toga and simply walked away from the alley and towards his apartment. He slammed the door so hard that he almost broke the knob, not to mention that he almost melted it because he was so angry. He grabbed a pack of cigarettes that he had bought and finished the entire pack in a couple of hours and drank a couple of beers that he had bought. I had saved. Unfortunately he drank them hot because he heated them up out of rage and fell asleep. As the hours passed, his phone kept receiving messages and calls from Toga. Almost all of them were the same where are you? He grabbed him and threw him to the wall. He got up and still angry he went to the place he had agreed with Toga. When the blonde arrived she received him with a hug and kisses on the neck. But he did not react or move. Something happens, asked the surprised blonde. Normally he would have ripped off all her clothes by now. I saw you Toga, what are you? I saw you with that guy in the alley Toga raised her eyebrow in confusion, which made Dabai angrier and threw her to the ground. What's the matter? The blonde shouted, angry at what had just happened. I thought that. He stopped before continuing the sentence. I thought that. What thing? I thought we had something special Toga opened her eyes at that moment. It seems that he felt the same way about her as she did about him. D did we have. What do you mean? Dabai simply turned around and started walking away from the place. Toga tried to stop him, but it was useless, he just let go of her grip. Fine, get away. I hope I never see you again you idiot. Toga screamed with tears in her eyes and ran back to the den and locked herself in her room. Dabai felt a stronger pain in his chest and walked aimlessly through the streets of the city. He had too much pain and he had to get it out of him. He was walking until he reached a certain place which the League had already studied before. The UA dorms. He was surprised to see that almost all the students were outside in some kind of party. He managed to see that Aizawa had just left in a vehicle. He was not thinking things clearly, much less what he was about to do. At the party, the students were celebrating that they had passed to their second year. They were cooking meat and dancing. Come Shoto, dance with me. The pink and horn girl insisted. But I don't know how to dance. I'll teach you. It's easy, please. The bicolor boy sighed and went to dance with her on the grill was Bekugo cooking. Next to him were Kaminari and Kirishima, who were talking stupid things. Everyone was having a good time, when suddenly, A-H-H-H, some screams were heard in the background. Everyone reacted to see how Momo and Tsui were grabbed by the neck and burned alive by blue flames. They quickly did what they could to get them back. T-S-U-Y-U, Y-A-O-M-O-M-O. They tried to make them react, but they were very burned. We have a bigger problem. Everyone turned in horror to Dabai who had his hands on fire and pointing them at the entire class. Hello and goodbye Yue they will only be more fuel for my flames. I point the jet at all the students just as he said. He threw his blue flames towards them. Most of them had very good reflexes and managed to dodge them. Those who couldn't only received a few burns in not very serious areas of the body. If I say it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt. Bakugo said to himself as he ignored the pain of the burn that had just been done on his leg and stood up again. They didn't know it, but they had the advantage that Dabai was alone, but even with that, the black man would not hesitate to kill them. Dabai already knew the quirks of all of them. He already knew which ones to eliminate first, the ones that attack at long distance and then the ones at short distance. He looked quickly at Jiru, who was the closest. With his speed he managed to grab her by the neck and make her collide with a window, making the purple-haired girl spit out blood. It didn't take long to set it on fire and let the body fall burned to the ground. K-Y-O-K-A -O the girls in Kaminari shouted in shock. He died instantly. He didn't suffer anything Dabai quickly headed to the next closest, Minta. Everyone was still in shock from witnessing the death of her friend. Dabai took advantage of those few seconds and stepped on Minta's face and smashed him against a tree and set it on fire. Although they saw it, 
They did not suffer the loss of Minta. He will kill us one by one if we don't stop him, Kirishima said, hardening his body and about to attack Dabai. He quickly created a fire barrier that divided the class. Shit. Dabai took advantage of the distraction again, managed to distinguish some silhouettes among the smoke and threw a large amount of fire at them, reducing them to ashes. When the fire cleared, the remaining students regrouped on the main street. W who were they this time? Kaminari said coughing up the smoke. Siro. Midoriya said as he looked around to see which of his friends were missing. Kota, Ayama, Takoyami, Sato. Hagakure. I'm here, said the invisible girl, offended by the comment. The truth is that many of her clothes burned due to the fire and she took them off. Since you're alive, go get help, he won't notice your absence. You literally won't notice it. Hagakure quickly ran looking for help. Midoriya and Kirishima were in charge of taking Tsuyu and Momo to a safe place since they, despite their burns on their necks, were still breathing, their lives hanging by a thread. The few that remained tried to confront the jet, which was still in the smoke, but was observing them directly. Where are you? Kaminari said, upset, sad and devastated by Jiru's death. Come out so I can see you. A shadow could be distinguished among the smoke. Kaminari used all his power and unleashed it against the shadow which fell, but when the smoke dissipated, that... Dabai had grabbed one of the bodies that had not been completely burned and used it as a shield to avoid any attack like that. Kaminari looked stupid after that. Four eyes. Take Pikachu away. Bakugo said getting into a fighting position. By the way, take the wounds too. Your Araka quickly made Momo, Kaminari and Tsuyu floatable and easier to carry, taking them to the nearest hospital. You will only be another sacrifice for the cause the jet launched another large amount of fire that everyone managed to dodge. Bakugo started throwing explosions at him as a distraction so Kirishima could hit him with all his might with his unbreakable form. However, Dabai realized this and shoots his flames at the redhead. Luckily his hardened form prevented him from dying due to the fire. He just fell unconscious to the ground breathing hard. Dabai took advantage of that moment to turn him into ashes. But suddenly a huge ice barrier formed between Kirishima and Dabai. Todoroki Shoto, Dabai whispered, looking at the bicolored young man. Shoto created large ice barriers that Dabai melted without any problem. The ice melts, don't you know that? While Dabai was buying time to recover from his own fire. Because he had used too much, Mina appeared from behind to kick him in the back of the head. Unfortunately, he managed to notice and grab the pink girl's leg and threw her, causing her head to crash against the ground and causing her to lose consciousness. When she aimed her hand to burn it, Shoto hugged her to protect her. Two birds with a stone. He was about to burn them, but... Taoya come meet your little brother in Dabai's mind. He could only see how his white-haired mother was holding a baby who was asleep. He had his hands bandaged and slowly saw the baby. Who had different colored eyes. What's it called? Young Taoya asked in a weak tone. Shoto, do you want to carry it? They carefully sat on the edge of the bed and Taoya held the baby. H hello Shoto. The little redhead smiled. I am your older brother. I will always take care of you back to reality. Dabai, no matter how much he wanted to, couldn't throw fire at Shoto, he simply under his arm. Todoroki, Todoroki. He whispered to himself. Shoto didn't understand why he was whispering his last name. He quickly picked up Mina in his arms and ran. At that moment some bandages surrounded Dabai's body and he could no longer use his quirk. Shit, you're under arrest. Aizawa said furiously. Behind him were, Midnight, Present Mike, Vlad King and some police officers. They put a collar on his neck which prevented him from using his quirk and they took him to Tartarus while the paramedics healed the students and collected the bodies. Or what was left of them seven students dead, two seriously fighting for their lives. And the rest were injured in some way after the black man was arrested. He was taken to the small prison at the police station, where his sentence would be decided and then he would be sent to Tartarus. At the hospital, everyone was still helping the less seriously injured. While Momo and Tsui were in surgery on the verge of death, the youngest Todoroki was sitting on a stretcher putting a bandage on his girlfriend's head and cleaning the blood. Does Mina hurt a lot? A little, I think. She couldn't finish the sentence because Shoto tucked her into bed and covered her with the blanket. Rest, I'll go see how the others are. Before leaving the room, he kissed her on the forehead and went out to the hallway where those who survived the attack were waiting for news of those who were in the operating room or mourning the losses. Shoto managed to see that Kaminari and Kirishima were on a bench mourning the deaths of one of their great friends and Kaminari's best friend. It should have been me, not her. The blonde with the electric quirk said through tears and holding a small necklace with a silver microphone that she had given him. She would have been a great hero Shoto couldn't see his friends that way. But there was something more important on his mind. Why Dabai didn't kill him and stayed motionless repeating his last name. Especially because it wasn't the first time it had happened. When he kidnapped Bakugo he called him by his full name. According to his father when they fought he called him by his full name too he knew that his friends would be safe in the hospital. He quickly left the hospital and headed to the police station. 
There was a big commotion at the main entrance of the hospital. It didn't take long for the media to arrive at the scene to interview any of those affected. Shoto had to manage to get out through one of the back doors in a disguise. At the league's hideout, they had seen the news that Dabai had attacked and killed several students. He alone made more than all your plans together Shigaraki. Be quiet unknown to any of them. Toga was at the door watching the news. Kurajiri increased the volume of the TV to clearly hear the sentence they would give to Dabai. It is not the first attack that this guy has made. In the last three years more than 90 bodies have been found burned to almost ashes. Not to mention that he participated in the kidnapping of one of the UA students. Attack on the number one hero, said the police captain. For now he is in the local prison, but tomorrow he will be sent to Tartarus where he will be executed. N. No everyone turned to look at Toga, who ran out of the lair. In the police station, hey lighter, one of the guards hit the bars of the cell where Dabai was. You have visitors Dabai, totally confused, hesitated to get up, what else could he lose? Resigned. He got up and followed the guard to the typical chairs where there are telephones and an armored glass window to communicate with the other person. He sat in the chair and picked up the phone and was surprised to see who the person in front of him was. Shoto Todoroki. Shoto, who went unnoticed by the media, arrived at the station and ordered to speak to Dabai immediately. What are you doing here? I come for answers and I will not leave without them Shoto stared coldly at Dabai until he said something. This is not the first time I have seen you. I saw you in the forest, I saw you when you attacked Endeavor and when you were about to kill me you kept repeating my last name. Who are you? Dabai stared at him as he shook his head from side to side. Todoroki, stop playing. Taoya Shoto opened his eyes in surprise and could only stutter a few sentences. T. 2. Long time no see. Little brother Shoto was still in shock. According to his father, Taoya had died, but he had never seen the corpse or anything like that. But looking at it in detail, it could be that he was telling the truth. W. What happened to you? That doesn't matter. They will execute me tomorrow. Goodbye little brother. Dabai hung up the phone and left the place back to his cell. Shoto couldn't let that happen. Although it is possible that he was his brother and was a villain, he no longer cared about the latter. Only his brother Taoya and his mother were the only ones who suffered his father's abuse, and they supported each other when I was walking to the exit of the station. A message arrived from Midori. Oh no. So you survived the operation, but unfortunately Momo did not. Another victim once he came out, he was walking. Someone grabbed him by the arm and dragged him into an alley. W.H. He couldn't finish the sentence because the mysterious person put a knife inside his mouth. What are you doing here? Toga Himiko Shoto thought when he saw the person in front of him. He wouldn't make any sudden movements because the knife she was holding would pierce him. Are you here to laugh in his face because he was executed? Shoto shook his head. He also noticed that Toga's tone of voice was broken and weak, totally different from the Toga he first saw in the forest. What do you want then hero? He slowly took out the knife which had blood on it from Shoto's mouth. He spit out some blood before speaking. He dot 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 he is my. Brother Toga dropped his knife at that moment. He said they would execute him tomorrow. A few tears came out of the blonde girl's eyes. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to get him out of there. I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. Wait, I'll help you. Toga turned to see Shoto totally surprised. What did you just? When we were children he took care of me and protected me when no one else did. I want to help him too. Toga helped him up and they looked at each other. Let's forget our differences. We will be a temporary team until we get it out, Shoto said looking towards the station. Team Toga will take out Dabai. That is your name. Of course I didn't use Todoroki's to and Toga's ga the name doesn't matter. The two of us will have to come up with something to get it out. Team Toga let's think. A blonde obsessed with blood and a desire to stab and a soba loving by color will team up to take out a serial killer they both care about before he is executed. After they agreed to ally temporarily, the Toga team hid in an old building near the police station. Toga grabbed a knife with blood on it that he would use as a pencil. I is that blood yours? Asked the bicolor sitting on the floor. Of course not. It was from someone who owed me a favor. Okay, we need a strategy if we want to avoid being taken to Tartarus. Let's kill everyone inside that place. We can't do something so stupid. Are you calling me stupid? Toga looked at him with murderous eyes and pointed the knife at him. And no, what I'm saying is that that's useless. We'll most likely both end up captured if… He couldn't finish that sentence because he started to think what would happen if he was captured. Everything he had fought for would be gone. His effort to be a hero would be gone. If he went to prison they would kill him without a doubt. He had to come up with something to escape safely. Be recognized. But a knife that was placed at his throat took him out of his thoughts. Are you planning to betray me? If you do I will cut you into pieces and make a coat out of your skin, a red and white scarf would be nice too, and I could sell your eyes as jewels on the black market. You have already thought about how to kill me, don't worry, I don't plan to betray you, I was just thinking about how to escape when we rescue him, maybe we need a vehicle, vehicle. I think I have something that will serve us well the next day. At approximately 9 in the morning, 
A total of eight officers were escorting Dabai to an armored vehicle, which he entered, and two police patrols and they headed towards Tartarus. They took a route where there was almost no traffic or civilians, but suddenly one of the wheels of the armored vehicle exploded and everyone had to stop. What the fuck is this? One of the officers tried to see what had exploded the tire. It was a knife, but not just any knife, since it was releasing smoke because it was very hot. More and more knives were thrown at all the wheels of the armored vehicle and the patrol cars. From a tall building Shoto was lighting the knives on fire and throwing them, but only at the wheels so as not to hurt any innocents. But he had not chosen that location randomly, since I had stopped him in front of an alley where there was a surprise, get out of my way or suffer the consequences. From the alley Toga shouted while he drove a crane at high speed the plan was to stop the vehicle and overturn it so that it could no longer move, which worked. But Toga ran over three of the officers who tried to shoot him. Shoto came down from the building and froze the officers, but Toga then killed them. Killing them was not part of the plan Toga, it was self-defense. They looked at me ugly so I had to kill them Toga went to the back of the car and kicked the door waiting for some response. She heard some kicks from inside which made her smile, and she tried to stab the door to open it which only resulted in breaking her knives. One of them must have the key. Help me find it. They searched all the corpses until they found the key until they found it and opened the door. Once they did Toga took Dabai out and hugged him with tears in her eyes. I would never deceive you. I. I Dabai didn't know what to say. He didn't expect anyone to save him, especially Toga. Forgive me. They both just kissed in the middle of the street, completely forgetting that Shoto was there. Suddenly they heard many sirens approaching. They did not know it, but the armored vehicle had a silent alarm that had been activated at the time of overturning. We have to go. What are you doing show? It doesn't matter. You have to go now before Toga could take Dabai's arm to climb onto the crane. Shoto pushed her causing her to fall to the ground. What do you? Shoto had saved her from being hit by a dart and hit him in the left arm, which began to turn purple. Dabai turned to look at the ceiling and saw that there was a hero on the ceiling and his next target was him. Without hesitation he burned him to ashes. Quickly they both tried to help Shoto in any way he didn't get up from the ground and his arm was almost completely purple. What they gave him was a poison dart. Do something Toga. Dabai shouted, desperate to try to save his little brother. I don't know what to do. Shoto with the little strength he had grabbed one of Toga's knives. See Korin, I'm not going to leave you here. The sirens sounded closer and closer. Shoto knew there wasn't much left so he used a last resort. He made a huge barrier of ice that separated them from him, pushing them a great distance away. Shit, Shoto. Dabai we have to go now. I'm not going to leave Toga. Dabai wasn't going to leave Shoto behind. But he noticed that the ice was still pushing them and the mermaids were already on the other side of the ice. As I'm sorry Shoto. I'm sorry mom I couldn't keep my promise Dabai took Toga's hand and they disappeared. The raven man and the blonde kept running through the alleys between the buildings, hiding from the police and trying to get to a safe place. They were very far from the league's lair and Dabai's apartment. It was not a good idea to return. Where are we going now Dabai? I don't know. We have to do something now. While they were running, they managed to reach a multi-story parking lot with many vehicles at their disposal to steal. Lucky, both looked at the vehicles to select which one would be ideal. They occupied one that would go unnoticed. That, Toga pointed to a red convertible with flame drawings on the side. No, because, you have to go under the radar, and you want to steal a red convertible. Don't be an idiot Toga pouted and stabbed the tires of the convertible. They continued searching another floor and found a black van. Dabai grabbed his jacket and wrapped it around his fist and knocked on one of the windows, but Toga only opened the door, which didn't. He had insurance and looked at Dabai smiling mockingly. Be quiet they both got into the truck and Toga cut the cables under the steering wheel and played with them until he managed to start it and Dabai started driving aimlessly. But it wasn't very good. Where did you learn to drive Dabai? Same as Spinner. Toga didn't know what he was referring to. But Dabai was hitting all the cars around him and avoiding traffic signs and was holding back so as not to run over people. As night fell, they had already managed to leave the city and hide in the forest. Luckily the truck was big and there was space for them to sleep behind. Toga had placed herself on top of Dabai, who covered her with his jacket. I was afraid of losing this. Toga whispered as she hid her face in Dabai's chest. Me too, Dabai said as he stroked Toga's blonde hair. Despite being highly wanted murderers and being crazy, they also have the right to have happiness, and their happiness was found with each other. Toga quickly fell asleep in his arms and Dabai hid his face in her hair to fall asleep too. The next day, the truck could not take them any further due to lack of gasoline. They had to burn it and continue walking. They managed to kill a duck and eat it along with the eggs from its nest. They continued walking, entering the mountain until they managed to find a cabin next to a large lake. Apparently it was abandoned. Although if someone came it was no problem eliminating them. The cabin was abandoned, since it had too much dust and cobwebs around it. But it was two floors and had quite a few rooms. 
They decided that the largest would be their bedroom so that was the one they cleaned first. By nightfall they had managed to clean the whole house and fell lying on the floor. We are going to steal the Dabai furniture tomorrow, sounds good. How do you plan to get them from the city to here? Maybe Handman can help us with that. As the days went by they went to the hideout and asked for help. They were angry at the stupid thing Dabai did. But grateful that they were both safe, the only one they hadn't seen in days was twice. They agreed to help them on the condition that they kept a low profile. And that when they were needed they would go no matter what they were doing, sleeping, eating, fucking or killing someone, if they were called they had to go. They managed to infiltrate various stores and steal many things. Dabai didn't care, but Toga didn't, since she chose almost all the padded and furry things like pillows, rugs and more, not to mention that they took more than one bed just in case. Did any member ever stay there once the place was furnished? The first thing Dabai did was lie down on the couch and turn on the couch, where the news about what happened to Shoto was on the news. He was still alive, but he had lost his left arm thanks to the poison dart. He had taken Toga's knife to tear it off. The police and the heroes believed the version that he was walking when he heard the incident and went to try to help. Because his house it was close to there. He had been admitted to the city's central hospital. From the look on Dabai's face, Toga knew he was thinking the same thing as her. Should we visit him? He helped us. Grab your coat at the hospital. Shoto was on a stretcher with Mina asleep next to him. The arm he lost was his left one and was replaced with a metal one. Unfortunately he couldn't use his fire anymore because the arm would melt. Several of his classmates had come to visit him. But they had to return to the dormitories. Except for Mina, who was not going to abandon him. In the blink of an eye Dabai and Togo were in front of the bed where he was and just looked at him. At least it's okay, Dabai said looking at Shoto. I wonder if his blood is acid, Toga said looking at Mina, not Toga. Hearing their voices, Shoto opened his eyes. W what are you doing here? I've told them that. We came to see how you were. Well, it could have been worse, Shoto said looking at his metallic arm. MHM. Mina was about to wake up, but Shoto stroked her hair to make her sleep again. So she's your girlfriend, Toga said. Yes, they said he almost had a panic attack when he heard I was here. We're sorry. Don't worry, it's okay. She said she had a surprise for me, but I didn't understand what she meant. That? I didn't understand. He said we weren't the only ones in the room. I think the news affected his eyesight, Shoto said looking at Mina. Dabai and Toga did understand, but they weren't going to tell him. We got a cabin in the mountains, Dabai said quickly. That's good, you know something. Mom is in this hospital if you want we can go too. No, Dabai said looking away. I don't want him to see me like that. She misses you a lot. Dabai just looked away and carried Toga on his back like she was a sack of potatoes. Put me down. See you soon Shoto. Two years later, as night fell, in a hospital room there was a white-haired woman resting peacefully, better known as Rei Todoroki. She had been discharged the next day. The joy she had at returning home and seeing her family was overwhelming. It meant she could barely stay awake out of happiness. They had brought her a tea with honey along with a pill that she herself ordered to help her fall asleep, which worked. However, in the early morning she woke up because she felt watched. She looked around the room and looked. A shadow on one of the chairs in the room, no matter how dark it was. Ray knew he was staring at her. W who's there? Ray asked, scared and protecting herself with a pillow. There was no answer. P please don't hurt me, Ray said, getting more and more scared. Because I would do. You have already suffered too much. And you never had to suffer. Mom, the person said, getting up from the chair. Those words left Ray stunned. The figure was considerably taller than her and was slowly approaching her. But without any intention of hurting her, it was the complete opposite. Once this person passed by the moonlight coming through the window, Ray managed to see him, a young man with black hair, staples in many parts of his face and body that held his burned skin. At first he was scared, but when he saw the boy's turquoise eyes and the last thing he said Mom, he knew immediately who it was, his son. T. Talia. Hi Mom Ray carefully got out of bed and approached him, taking his hands and looking into his eyes. I failed you Mom, Dabai said, looking away, I have done horrible things. Nothing of that, Ray said as she hugged him gently, you are my son, no matter what you have done, I will never stop loving you. Dabai smiled at such words and returned the hug. They were not like Toga's hugs, in Ray's arms he felt totally safe, like when he was a child, they spent several seconds hugging each other without anything else mattering. I heard that you can return tomorrow too. Home. Yes, Shoto invited me to stay with him and his family. Ray said smiling, I'm very glad you're here Taoya, I mean. Dabai, you can call me Taoya mom those words put a bigger smile on Ray's face. I still can't believe you came to see me. There is something I wanted to tell everyone, but I wanted you to be the first to know. Suddenly a small cry coming from the chair where Dabai was standing caught their attention. That timely Dabai had left a small bundle wrapped in blankets on the chair. Ray opened her eyes in total surprise when she deduced what the raven man came to tell her. Are you? 
Father. Yes I am dab I carefully took the bundle and brought it closer to Ray so she could see better. Wow. Ray saw a little blonde girl with turquoise eyes. The baby didn't look more than one year old. Do you want to carry her, mom? See can I? Of course dab I carefully handed her the baby who had stopped crying and was staring at her. She is beautiful. Heaven, she has your eyes he looks more like his mother. What her name? Emma. The baby moved her small arms and grabbed Ray's hair and pulled it gently. Dwarf, don't do that, Dabai said to the baby. Honey, it's okay, it doesn't hurt. Ray began to cuddle and tickle the baby. Amaya's reaction was an adorable laugh and hugging her grandmother's head. Dabai smiled when he saw that his daughter liked Ray. How cute is Talia? I know, it is one of the few good things that have happened to me in my life. Ray looked down and caressed Dabai's cheek, gently running her hand over the burned flesh and cold staples of the raven's face. He does it hurt. It always hurts mom. Amaya looked at them both and moved her small hand towards Dabai. He held the baby's hand and moved it up and down making her laugh. After a few minutes Dabai got up and carried the baby. We will visit you again mom. Are you leaving already? As soon. I'm sorry mom. Dabai said looking towards the window. We live far away and I have some pending matters Ray didn't want to know what he meant. But she had an idea. Kill people. Please don't get into trouble. Talia. I do not promise anything after saying that he jumped out of the window. Landing on his feet on the ground and holding Amea who only saw her father in confusion. See you soon mom, Dabai said looking at the window and then at his daughter, let's go back before your mom gets worried and throws a knife at me for being late. Again Amaya gave a small laugh and they both returned to the cabin. They used Kirajiri as a means of transportation, or they got on a train that left them on the way. Not close, but they had to walk for about 30 minutes once they arrived. He laid the baby in her crib and covered her with a large blanket that Shoto had given them. Then he went to the room where Toga was completely asleep. He lay down slowly being careful not to wake her, since it would be bad if she wakes up and discovers that he has just returned. He covered her with a blanket and quickly fell asleep. Bringing a baby into their lives was something completely unexpected for them, but they promised that they would treat her better than how they were treated as children. Shoto was helping them a lot. After they discharged him, due to the new arm he could not use his fire again, thanks to so many years of only using ice and he graduated without problems. Not to mention that he and Mina also had a girl one year older than Dabai and Toga between Shoto and the League they always diverted attention from the home, shelter in the mountain. From time to time the League would hide there after committing a crime. More than once Shigaraki disintegrated a stuffed animal of the baby making her cry. Toga immediately chased him through the forest with murderous intentions after his reunion with his mother. Dabai invited her, Shoto and his family, Fayumi and Natsuo to spend one weekend with them. The last two could not attend due to work and study issues. Where are we going Sho? Mina asked, looking around since Shoto was driving in the middle of the forest. To visit someone, okay. Mina looked towards the back seats, Mrs. Todoroki, do you know where we are going? I think so. Honey, Ray said smiling and playing with the baby, I already told you that you can call me Ray. The baby grabbed Ray's white hair and started biting it. Yuzuru, don't do that to grandma Yuzuru. Shoto and Mina's daughter, wavy pink hair, turquoise right eye and yellow left eye, skin like Shoto's, and was very energetic like Mina. After a few minutes they arrived at the cabin. Mina looked around and picked up the baby. Ray helped Shoto unload the luggage. Shoto knocked on the door. But in a strange way for Mina and Ray. He knocked two times and waited four seconds to knock three more times and waited again to knock one more time. Everyone who knew the location of the cabin and knew who the owners were knew about this secret touch. Since sometimes unwanted visitors arrived for some reason to the cabin so they had to kill them Dabai opened the door. Mina seeing him remembered what happened in the camp a few years ago and the attack on the dormitories. But Shoto, Ray and even Yuzuru smiled at her and Yuzuru is seeing him for the first time until now, Ray hugged Dabai. Dabai, hello mom, Dabai said returning the hug. Mina stepped back a little surprised after hearing those words. He's a villain and he's S. Ray's son. That means he's Shoto's brother. It was the only thing Mina thought about while she was holding the baby. Are they going in or? Dabai asked, looking at Mina intently. Mina was so deep in thought that she hadn't noticed when Shoto and Ray entered the cabin. She slowly entered and sat next to Shoto on the couch. I, I didn't know he was your brother, Mina whispered, looking around. Mina, you have nothing to fear. Shoto gently stroked her hair with his right hand. They are family, Mina nodded and smiled. Toga went down the stairs carrying Amea who moved her arms as if greeting them all. Ray smiled and hugged them both. Thank you for taking care of my son, mom. I can take care of myself. Was nothing, Toga exclaimed, interrupting Dabai. The little blonde baby laughed and hugged Ray's face, which made them all laugh. Nina and Toga also hugged for the first time and after a few minutes of talking they began to get along very well. They left both babies in Amea's crib. They both looked at each other and after a few seconds Amea gave her a stuffed strawberry. Yuzuru took it and smiled. They both started playing with the stuffed animals. They arrived just in time. I'm going to start cooking, Toga said going to the kitchen. 
I'll help you, darling, Ray followed her so they could both cook. What are they going to cook? Dear, Dabai said dryly. V dear. He fell into a trap this morning. Dabai said leaning on the crib watching his daughter and niece play. Tomorrow we will go fishing, do you know how to fish? Mina asked curiously. No, then how? They'll find out tomorrow. Mina was curious and went to help them as much as she could in the kitchen. After they had lunch, Dabai and Toga gave them a small tour of the cabin and the surrounding area. There was a small lake that was attached to a river that ran down the mountain from which from time to time they would go fishing or swimming. While they were walking a medium gray wolf approached them. Mina and Ray were scared when they saw the animal, but it was harmless. From time to time it went to the cabin and Toga gave it meat. It was like a pet since they called it Suki around the cabin there were many traps, either for intruders or for animals. Cables that when someone stepped on them would dangle. They dug holes that had knives in the bottom and they covered the holes with leaves, and even Suki would alert them. When they returned to the cabin, Ray helped them plant a small garden behind the house so that they would not have to go into the forest to look for fruits or vegetables. Ray insisted that she sleep in the smaller room so that Shoto and Mina would sleep in the larger one next to use her Rest. Tomorrow we have a fun day planned, Toga said smiling before turning off the lights. The next morning Mina woke up first than Shoto and Yuzuru. She heard a sound coming from outside. She put on her leopard slippers and went out. She saw that Ray and Toga were making breakfast. Is there anything I can help you with? Of course Mina, Ray said smiling. You can make the coffee and heat the milk for the girls while they were in the kitchen. Yuzuru woke up and moved Shoto's head until he woke up. Amaya began to throw the toys that were in his crib at Dabai to make him wake up. She managed to hit him in the face with a small plastic ring. Dwarf, I told you not to do that. Dabai took Amaya in his arms, who laughed and hugged him. Dabai sighed and carried her to the kitchen. The blonde baby waved her hand, greeting everyone. Dabai put her in her crib and sat in one of the chairs. After a few minutes, Shoto and her baby too, put her in the crib with her cousin and they both played throwing toys at their parents. I'm still not used to this, Dabai said being hit by stuffed animals. You'll get used to it, Shoto said. Also being hit by stuffed animals, then he was hit by a baby bottle. The girls laughed after seeing that. The babies did the same, Dabai had his same face as always. They began to eat what they made for breakfast, egg and ham sandwiches along with coffee. I remembered that you liked them a lot when you were little Taoya, Ray said smiling at the oldest of her children. I I didn't think you remembered. Thanks mom while they were eating breakfast, Mina gave the girls their bottles. They left them empty almost at the same time. After that they gave them a quick bath. Mina put insect repellent on Ray, Yuzuru and Shoto, almost always she and her daughter used them. They stung a lot. Dabai and Toga didn't have that problem as much since Dabai's skin and burning smell protected him from any insect. Plus Toga and Amea passed by close to him so there was nothing to worry about. Hurry up, let's go to the lake, Ray told them from the other side of the door to her room. We're already out Mina gave Yuzuru a float that looked like a duck in a hat so he wouldn't get burned. They went out and met the others. Amea also had a float but this one looked like a whale. They walked for a few minutes down the hill where the cabin was. It was a large lake that overflowed with several rivers around the mountain. They chose one of the edges that had grass to put towels on it and be able to sit. So, this is where you fish? Shoto asked, looking at the lake out of the corner of his eye. He managed to see some fish jumping in the middle of it. Yes, do you want to try to catch something? I warn you that there are also more things than fish. No thanks. And does the fish from the lake taste good? I don't know. I hate fish, Dabai said as he carefully helped Amea into the lake to swim. So, why do you fish? Koga likes fish, and she doesn't know how to swim, so I fish. And what does swimming have to do with? Stop asking so many stupid questions and just observe they watched as Dabai took off his shirt and dived into the lake. After a few seconds he came out with a medium-sized fish in his left hand. Toga took out a plastic box and put the fish there. What a curious way to fish, honey. Both Amea and Yuzuru were on the shore of the lake with their floats. Both Mina and Toga accompanied them to take care of them and cool off. Ray cut some pieces of watermelon for everyone. Dabai jumped into the lake again and this time grabbed a slightly smaller one and put it in the box. Shoto was just sitting silently looking around the eldest Todoroki went to leave the box with the fish at the cabin and returned with a bow and a hunting rifle. Which prefer? That? What are you going to? Hunting something, those fish won't be enough. Dabai threw the bow at him. Get up and let's go Shoto looked at Mina who smiled and nodded. He looked at Yuzuru who applauded and splashed water on Mina. He took the bow and followed Dabai deep into the forest. I've never used one of these things Dabai. I would give you a knife, but Toga doesn't let anyone touch them. Just aim the arrow and shoot after that explanation that left him more confused. They continued walking until they hunted something. They managed to hear a nearby noise and took aim. It was a large wild boar. Kill him. Shoto shot an arrow at that moment. You hit the tree idiot. Try again Shoto shot another arrow again. Perfect. You hit the tree again. I'll take care of it. Dabai grabbed the bow and aimed it at the wild boar. Hitting it in the eye and killing it instantly. 
This is how it's done they both carried the boar back to the cabin. They continued playing in the water. Toga returned to the cabin and started skinning the boar and the fish with his knives. Shoto returned to the lake, but Dabai stayed with Toga. I told you not to worry. They are having fun Dabai. I know, Dabai. Before leaving, pinched Toga's butt, making her jump in surprise. Dabai a reminder. Toga smiled and showed his teeth. Never do that while I have a knife in my hands. Dabai swallowed and returned to the others. After a few minutes of brutally skinning the wild boar, Toga set the fire with some matches and wood so he could cook the meat. He would have told Dabai to do it, but the last time the food burned. They had lunch quietly on the shore of the lake. The girls swam a little deeper than normal with the help of their parents. After a few hours they returned to the cabin. They bathed the girls again and put them in their pajamas and left them in the cribs for them to take a nap. How do you have a TV signal in the middle of the forest? Mina asked surprised after turning on the TV. Well, context. Mina laughed after hearing that. She, along with Ray and Toga, sat down and watched a movie. Dabai stayed smoking outside the cabin and Shoto fell asleep in his room. As night fell, the rest of the wild boar had dinner with some vegetables from Toga's garden. After collecting the dishes, they went to sleep, except for Dabai, who stayed in one of the chairs looking towards the forest while drinking a beer. Can I accompany you? Whatever you want, Shoto who was still awake, grabbed a chair and sat next to him. Even if they were brothers, there wasn't much they could talk about. I still can't believe you saved me, idiot. I couldn't let my brother die. For the second time, I wanted to kill you when you were little and still you. Gee thank you Shoto Dabai gave him a beer from the fridge and they stayed drinking. However those two bottles grew to four, then six, and ended up at fourteen as Amea's first birthday approached. Ray insisted to Dabai that they come to her house to celebrate. After Ray left the hospital she asked Endeavor for a divorce. Her children sided with her and kicked him out of the house forever. Ray and Fayumi decorated the house and made a birthday cake. Shoto went to pick them up in his car. The baby and Toga fell asleep on the way. Dabai just looked around. Are you sure no one will see us? The jet black man asked, looking around. No one will do it Taoya. The windows are tinted, we can see outside. But no one can see inside the car, I see since Shoto left Yue one year ago. He always feared for his family. Although his girlfriend was also a hero, so he never spared expenses so that they were both safe. That also applied to his mother, sister and brothers, now that security applied to Toga and Amea too. Ray had told Dabai to return to his old home and they could live as a family with Toga and Ame. But he was afraid that someone would recognize him or Toga and that because of that they would hurt Ray or take his girlfriend and daughter away from him. When they arrived at said home, Dabai felt like many memories. Mainly bad ones came back to his mind. But he tried to ignore them and woke up Toga grabbing her buns making the right one loose. Crazy wake up Toga bit his hand in reaction to what he did to her hair. I told you that if you touch my buns I will rip your hand off. Toga stared at Dabai. Amea woke up and stretched out her small arms. The right one fell into Toga's left bun making them both laugh. It seems that the only one who can touch her hair is Amea. He took her in his arms and they all entered. Ray received them all with a hug. Toga looked at the photographs that hung on the wall. They were of all the Todoroki. Only the ones with Endeavor were burned until their image was erased. Dabai, which one are you? Toga asked as he held Amea. Do you want to see it? Come, I have an album from when Taoya was a child Toga smiled wickedly and turned to look at Dabai who was surprised and tried to stop them because he knew which album his mother was referring to. Toga put Amea in the crib next to Yuzuru who was asleep and followed Ray to the room. The white-haired girl took out a black album from one of her drawers and sat on the edge of the bed. Toga sat next to her, carefully watching the photos, which were a Dabai about five years old trying to cook a bacon on his left arm with his fire. Another of Dabai about six years old trying to put baby Shoto in a box to send him to the North Pole. The box had non-fragile content written on the side Dabai and Natsuo playing video games on the couch Dabai and Fayumi after they painted Endeavor's suit pink, which he had to wear until the dye wore off. In all of them, Toga noticed a very strange pattern. Her hair changed from red to white and she had more bandages on her body, other than that all the photos seemed pretty to her. Dabai, you were so cute, what happened to you? Dabai was in the doorway looking at them both. He knew Toga wouldn't stop bothering him about those photos. You can take some if you want Toga, Ray said smiling. Toga smiled wider and took some photos carefully and put them in her shirt. She would definitely save them and show them to Amea in the league. Dabai hit his face against the wall several times knowing the consequences of what his mother did. Ray came out of his room and smiled at him. What happened dear? Why did you save those photos mom? Ray responded with a hug. Although Dabai wouldn't admit it, he missed those hugs, the hugs that only a mother can give. It was the only thing left of you. Or so we thought. Ray raised her head and smiled at him. I talked to the others and we are planning a trip to the beach or the mountains. I wanted you to go so that the whole family can be united. But, an end. I said Taoya family. Ray smiled more after saying that. I'll talk to Tog. Yes we will go. 
Toga joined the hug Damai side in defeat. He was afraid that they would recognize him or Toga, but he wanted them both to be happy and enjoy their lives, especially Ame. They went down to the room where Fayumi and Natsuo had just arrived. They both hugged their brother after a long time and tried not to talk about the past or the things that Taoya has done all these years. Ame and Yuzuru were playing in the crib next to Toga. Rei and Mina were preparing dinner and Shoto was alone in a chair in the corner. Are you a teacher? Dabai asked with surprise. Yes, I can take care of your little girl whenever you need, Fayumi said smiling. Dabai turned his gaze to Amea who was smiling at Toga. Amea felt very comfortable and safe around her entire family. Coming was a good idea. Amea and Yuzuru from the crib looked at the gifts that were on the table. Both of them were struck by the wrapping paper that had drawings that they liked. Their mothers carried them so that everyone could sit at the table to eat. Dabai looked at Toga and Amea who looked happy being with their family. Maybe he would consider the possibility of stopping living in the cabin and returning to the city. It had been years since the last murder so maybe he wasn't so wanted anymore. As I thought after they had dinner, Mina and Fayumi put the gifts on the floor and Amea crawled over to them, Shoto holding Yuzuru so she wouldn't go to open the gifts. Amea was surprised to see what they gave her. Ray gave him a totally white coat with small snowflakes drawn on it. Fayumi some interactive books with different stories Natsuo gave him a red plastic ball. Shoto and Mina gave him a set of plastic rings, Yuzuru gave him one of her teddy bears. Dabai gave him a set of plastic knives and Toga gave him a black jacket. Amea hugged all the gifts with a smile on her face. Ray insisted that everyone stay because it was too late. They stayed in Damai's old room, which had a car-shaped bed. But it was very small. Toga and Amea fell asleep there and Damai slept on the floor with a pillow. After thinking about it for several days, Damai decided that if they were going to return to the city, they left Amea in the care of her grandmother while they both looked for a new home. Dabai wanted Toga to stay with Ray and Amea, but the blonde insisted, threatened him to stop, that both were. And it was better that way otherwise he would choose a house that Toga didn't like and listen to her complain for the rest of his life. They decided that it would be a house that was not in the center of the city in case they were discovered they would have a better chance to escape. Obviously they had different plans to escape in order not to risk it. They decided to use disguises to go unnoticed. Toga put on glasses and a formal women's suit, purple in color and a white shirt underneath. She looked like a businesswoman or a lawyer. And Dabai only a black jacket with a hat that covered the scars on his face along with black glasses. They had a long day to find their new home. Money was no problem as they had plenty that they got from the many robberies and murders they had committed over the years. How is it? Dabai said looking around the place. The kitchen is very small, Toga said with a pout. So what? I won't be able to have many knives there. I don't like it. Dabai sighed and they both left the place towards another house. As they walked, Toga knelt down and started making strange sounds. What the hell are you doing Toga? The jet black man asked, arching an eyebrow. H-A-A-A-A-A Toga put his hands next to his cheeks and continued making noises. Dabai looked at the front where there was a white cat that was licking itself. Toga was trying to scare him in some way, but he couldn't. H-A-A-A-A-A the cat still didn't move. H-A-A-A-A-A forget it Toga. Dabai grabbed her hand and they continued on their way. They went to another house that was a little bigger. Toga was walking around looking at the walls and going from room to room. Dabai, look at the size of the bathroom. It's bigger than our cabin room. Toga was spinning around in the shower, as if I cared about the size of the bathroom. Dabai looked at the rest of the rooms and noticed something important. There is only one room. There is not enough space for the three of us. We have to find another place. Let's go crazy. Pooh. Toga pouted again and followed him out of the place they still had to see another house. But first they went to eat something. They entered a restaurant where there were very few people. While they waited Toga played with the knife that was on the table. What are you supposed to do Toga? Seeing how sharp they are. Toga looked at the knife out of the corner of her eye very close to her face. It doesn't have much edge. I can't draw blood with it. Maybe it's because it's a butter knife. MMM, maybe that's why. Do you think Amel likes knives? I don't know. Maybe you're always putting plastic knives in his crib and he likes to play with them. She's like her mommy. Toga smiled showing her fangs. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. After about 20 minutes the food arrived. Both had ordered meat and fries. Dabai ate normally so as not to attract too much attention, but Toga used his meat knife as a fork to eat the meat when they finished. They went to the last house and they both loved it. It was a single story with at least four bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen, a decent-sized living room, a small garden behind the house for them to play with Ame. They paid cash and jewelry for the house since they didn't have any credit cards. When they were given the property papers and the saleswoman left, they locked the door and called Shigaraki to help them move the things out of the house. The cabin with the help of Kirijiri once in the cabin. They packed everything in different boxes and went through the black and purple portal. If you break or disintegrate anything from Amea again, I will tear off your fingers. Toga pointed a knife at Shigaraki. 
He was holding a box with several of the blonde baby's toys. The same goes for Yudabai. They both knew that Toga wasn't just saying it. He stabbed Shigaraki's leg when he broke Ameya's music box just because he didn't like the tone. Kurajiri only watched them while waiting for things to finish happening and not kill each other in the process. They lasted about half an hour going through all the things. Only Dabai and Toga arranged the things in their respective places. In the same way they knew that they could never let their guard down. Toga had hidden knives all over the place in case they needed them. Behind the sofas, under his bed, under his pillow, behind the toilet, between Dabai's underwear, and in many other hidden places, except in his daughter's room, is it necessary to have a knife there? Dabai asked, watching Toga put a knife inside a safe. It's the lucky one, don't judge me, you save staples. Shut up, I'll call mom to bring it. Dabai took his cell phone and called Ray. He told her the location and she arrived next to Amea, who was about to fall asleep. She was an angel, Ray said smiling and handing the baby to Toga. Come on little one, let's get to know your new home. Toga took the little girl in her arms and took her to see her home. A new life for both of them had begun. A normal life, to give their daughter a better childhood and life than the one they had. But, the past never dies their life was quite normal for quite a long time. They raised their daughter much better than how they were raised. Between the two of them they taught her to walk and to speak her first words. Say mom, ma. No Amea, mom, Toga said holding her as they spun around in a swivel chair. Ma, Toga and Amea spent a lot of time at home, playing more than anything else. From time to time the three of them would go out together somewhere with Amea, whether it was to the park so she could play on the swings or other games there. They were saving to buy her some game like that to have in the back of the house, because if it was stolen it would be very obvious where it came from there were times when no one could take care of her, so they had to take her with them when they went to work. And their job was to create chaos and kill whoever got in the way. But the little blonde baby seemed to adapt quickly to the situations in which her parents got involved. Involved one night, Toga was carrying Amea in a fanny pack, who was laughing and moving her arms. Dabai was walking behind them in case something happened to protect them. They were returning from buying food and other things. While they were walking they both felt that someone was watching them. Do you feel it too? Toga whispered to Dabai. There was no response. When he turned his head the jet was no longer there. Her senses were not failing. A person was following them and when she realized that they discovered her she started to run. She had not planned to attack them, just follow them. She tried to escape or call for reinforcements with her cell phone since she could not face them both. Shit, she said to herself, looking around. There was no suitable place to hide since many stores were closed and there was no one on the street, but she heard the footsteps approaching, she had no choice but to run towards an alley. Hoping that he wouldn't follow his trail, he hid behind a garbage can and barely stuck his head out to see when he was passing by. When he saw that a shadow passed quickly down the street, he was close. When she got up, an attack from above immobilized her, crashing her to the ground. Toga bomb. The blonde jumped from the roof of the building next to the alley. Amea was laughing at what was happening. Not because she had Toga's personality, but because she thought they were playing. Toga fell on the girl's back, stuck a knife in each hand and sent a message to Dabai, which didn't take that long to arrive. He grabbed the girl's neck and hit her against the wall. Why the fuck were you following us? Dabai said, pressing his neck tightly. Why you attacked the bedrooms? Are you still with that? Dabai pressed harder on her neck what's done is done and I would do it again to all your friends if that's what you want. L they will catch them. That? Dabai hit her in the face making her spit blood who? Did you think they forgot? They will find you Dabai Dabai turned to look at Toga. They both looked at Amea who was smiling at them both without knowing what was happening. Yeah. Little Amea applauded her parents, smiling. I won't tell you anything else. Of course not. You've already said enough. But first, better don't look or listen to this. Dabai lowered the hat he was wearing so Amea wouldn't see and Toga covered her ears. Toga gave her his knife and stuck it in her throat, killing her instantly. Then they burned the body to ashes and left. Thank you very much. Itsuka Kendo back in the present. Dabai had returned home and brought two bags. He put one in the refrigerator and another on the table. Amea crawled up to him and hugged his boot. Don't do that. It's dirty Dabai picked her up and sat on the couch with the girl on his lap. He took a toy from her crib and started playing with her. She didn't understand the function of the toy, which was a rattle. Amea just took it and shook it while he laughed. While they were in the living room, Toga went to the room to change clothes. Since she was going out with Rei, Mina and Fayumi for a girl's night I'm leaving, Toga said putting on a black hat. Ma, of course I'll bring you a dessert Amea. See you Toga left the house heading to Todoroki's house. Dabai put Amea in the crib while he took out one of the beers that he had left in the refrigerator recently. He gave Amea a bottle of milk. Ma, what are you trying to? No, your first word will not be mom Dabai took her in her arms and sat her on his lap. Ma, no, say dad. Ma, no, dad they were trying to get Amea to say daddy, which she didn't. They tried to use some stuffed animals to get her to say it, but she didn't. Look, this is dad. Dabai brought a stuffed bacon to the baby. Do you want dad? 
Amaya nodded and tried to grab the stuffed animal. Say dad. Mondabai sighed in defeat and gave her the stuffed animal. Today would not be the day. He left the baby next to him while he watched TV. While they both watched an animated movie. That they were the only ones that didn't make the baby cry. A call disconnected him from the movie. The call was from Shigaraki. What do you want? No, I can't go. I'm with Amaya and Toga is not there. Go and buy your video game alone. If you go to hell, you too. Shit Dabai hung up the phone and looked at Amaya. W what did you just? Shit, the baby said again. Don't say that. Dabai tried to make me forget that. Go back to Ma at that moment Toga came through the door with a box in her hands. Baby, here is your dessert. Toga shouts closing the door. Ma, it's good that you arrived. Toga, I was busy going to the bathroom. Dabai went into the bathroom and Toga sat on the couch giving Amaya dessert. It was a piece of chocolate cake with peanuts. Rich, right. Shit Toga was shocked and saw the baby. What did you say baby? Shit, who taught you that? Toga had a little twitch when she heard what he said. He had an idea of who it had been. Dad, D-A-B-I. Wow, so this is the lair where you lived everyone turned their gaze towards the main door where Ray and Dabai were. The white-haired woman was insisting that they know the place where she was living with the rest of her fellow villains. After insisting too much on her. If anyone looks at her badly, I'm going to burn them. Dabai threatened the rest of the members. Ray giggled and they both entered. Dabai took her to the bar where she saw Kirijiri and smiled a little nervously. H hello. Welcome Mrs. Todoroki, said the league bartender while giving her a menu with the different drinks. Can I offer you a drink? Ray looked at all the drink options they offered. Some were a simple drink, others were mixes that had slightly curious names. Um, excuse me. What is an orgasm? I have never tried one. Ray said looking at the menu both Shigaraki and Dabai tried not to laugh when they heard her say that. It's a drink that contains coffee liqueur and Bailey's Kirajiri said showing the bottles of said liqueurs. It also has ice. I see. Ray continued looking at the menu. She saw another curious name. Does screwdriver refer to the tool? No ma'am, it's vodka with a little orange juice. Oh, I love orange juice Ray said smiling. They served her a glass of juice which she drank. Then she closed the menu and returned it. Thank you, Talia. Have you tried any of these drinks? He loves sex on the beach Shigaraki said between laughs. Ray choked on her juice and turned to see Dabai, who hit the league leader on the head. Don't say it like that, idiot. It's a drink, mom. Don't think anything else. Dabai tried to excuse himself. Don't worry Talia, just don't drink too much. Ray hadn't finished reading the menu and didn't see said drink. She thought something else about her son and the beach. Dabai sighed and gave her a plate of fries and another glass of orange juice. Kirajiri served both boys a bottle. Of beer, Ray looked at them both and frowned a little. Don't drink too much. We won't do it mom. Just one bottle and that's it. They both opened the bottles and Ray made sure that they only drank one. She had horrible memories of her drunk ex-husband and how he hit her in that state. She did not want any of her children to get drunk and attack their partners in any way. That's why when they they finished them I grab the bottles. I throw them away. Where is th Don't worry, ma'am. Shigaraki said taking the bottles. I'll throw them away. Shigaraki went to the kitchen to throw away the bottles. You have a good best friend Talia, Ray said smiling and eating another potato Shigaraki. He's not my best friend, Dabai said while he lit a cigarette with his fire. Oh, and what is it then? An idiot. The leader helped me with some plans and we almost killed each other when we met. I can't believe that idiot is my best friend Shigaraki returned and this time he grabbed a Coca-Cola from the bar. What do we order this time? Pizza. Burgers. Shigaraki said grabbing the phone to order dinner. Or do we let Compress make dinner again? Let's order pizza. The last thing Compress cooked had fish, Dabai said as he took another inhale of his cigarette. If you want I can make dinner they both turned to look at Ray surprised. They didn't expect her to say that. But mom, you are our guest. What kind of dinner are we talking about? Shigaraki said putting the phone back on the table. I can manage in the kitchen, Ray said smiling. If you insist. They both took her to the kitchen where she looked at what they had to think about what to prepare for dinner. There wasn't much, many bags of chips or fried tortillas, chocolate cookies. In the refrigerator there were many sauces, some half-drunk sodas, cold slices of pizza. She began to worry about her son's diet. There is a store nearby, right? I'll go buy some things, Ray said as she put on her sweater. Yes mom, here around the corner. Just be careful Ray took her bag and left the place. Both Dabai and Shigaraki sat on the couch playing video games while they waited for her to come back and make dinner. Where are Toga and the brat? Shigaraki asked, still focused on the screen. With my sister doing paperwork so that Amaya can enter kindergarten they continued playing and listened when the door opened. They saw Ray enter carrying several bags. She went to the kitchen and started cooking. She also washed the dishes, not because of dirt, but because of the dust they had since they hardly ever used them. Since they always used plastic and threw them away, Kirajiri offered to help her but she refused. After a few minutes they both could smell the aroma of Ray's homemade food. They paused the game and headed to the bar counter waiting for the food. Shigaraki grabbed other cans of soda and gave one to Dabai. 
Dabai opened it in his face making let it get soaked. Do you really think I'm stupid enough to fall for the shake and can joke? Dabai said with an evil smile on his face. How the hell did you know? Shigaraki said grabbing a rag to dry himself. Said rag was previously used to clean the bathroom. 1. It's the oldest joke ever. 2. You've done it to everyone here. And 3. You're never that nice. Be quiet Ray came in and gave each of them a plate with meat dipped in sauce, rice and some of dad's puree. Both of them were drooling over such food. He also gave one to Kurajiri and saved it for the rest of the league in case they came. He sat down with them and they ate together. And what are they playing? Ray asked while eating. A soccer game. But Shigaraki excuses himself that since he hasn't played in a long time he doesn't have practice, Dabai said while eating. TCH. But we are going to watch a program that is very good. Do you want to see it too, ma'am? Sure, what program? Happy Tree Friends shortly after they enrolled Amaya in kindergarten. Fayumi gave them advice on how to start teaching her things. Toga and Amaya were on the floor of her room with various photos which the girl had to classify. Very good Amaya, this one. Toga showed him a photo of Dabai smoking daddy, said the little blonde girl. Perfect and it is. Well, yeah. Amaya smiled and applauded. Now this, Toga showed him a photo of Bakugo screaming. Horrible and bad? Perfect. Now them. Toga showed him a photo of Mina carrying Yuzuru. Aunt Mina and Yuzuru. Good, you learn very well. This one, Toga showed him a photo of Aizawa sleeping. Ugly and bad. You're right. Now a difficult one. Toga searched through the photos and found one of two girls. They Amaya didn't know what to say, since she had never seen the girls in the photo. I do not know mom, they're bad, but they're already dead so it doesn't matter. Toga threw the photo on the ground said photo was of Momo and Jiru smiling when they played as a band for the entire UA enough practice for today little one. Go to bed and sleep, and daddy won't come, asked the blonde girl, yawning and putting on her pajamas, which had a red stained print. He's busy, maybe he'll come tomorrow Amaya hugged one of her stuffed animals and managed to climb into her bed. It didn't take long for her to fall asleep. Toga covered her with her blanket and then went to watch television. There was nothing interesting. Some news about tax increases, which did not matter to him. Sports that in Europe a German team scored eight goals against a Spanish team. That midnight was once again chosen the sexiest hero with appeals from Mount Lady that she was too old to continue winning with Dab. I was with Shoto and Shigaraki drinking at the Lair Bar. You know, you are my favorite pests, Dabai said drinking another beer. I'm glad to know that, Shigaraki said, aiming to throw his beer in his face. I correct. The rats and then you. We already understood Talia. I correct again. The spiders. The rats and then you too. They both stared at the bearer of blue fire with the same expression on their faces. After several drinks, the three of them were completely drunk. Hirajiri took Shigaraki to his bed and called the wives of the Todoroki brothers. Mina helped Shoto to the car by holding his right shoulder. Your breath stinks show. And I no longer have any mints in my bag. Mina said helping him get to the car. You look like my wife. Her color is the same, Shoto said with his eyes blurred. He only saw a large pink spot. I'm your wife Shoto. Mina tried not to laugh when she saw Shoto like that. I love my wife. After saying that, Shoto fell asleep and hit his face against the car door. Mina laughed and put him in his seat, then put his seatbelt on and drove home. For her part, Toga dragged him by his feet against the pavement to her home. It wasn't that far so she wasn't afraid to leave Amea alone for a few minutes. And she left him lying on the living room floor and went to her room to continue with what she was doing before Kirajiri called her after a few hours. Gamai woke up a little dizzy and tried to go up the stairs. He fell once but kept going up. When he reached the second floor he held onto the wall and went to see his daughter. Who was still fast asleep, he woke up. He walked over and put his hand in her blonde hair and she hugged her while she was asleep, which made him smile a little. Suddenly he heard a sound coming from his room, as if something was shaking, more precisely as if the bed was moving. He quickly entered and saw Toga trying to open one of his bags of potatoes that he had hidden in the room. Are you trying to eat my potatoes? No, maybe. Toga tried to hide daddy's bag behind her. Damn monster. I thought you were masturbating. And you took it well. But this is worse. What's worse? Give me my potatoes. No. Toga threw a pillow in his face and then snuck under him with the bag in her hands. Dabai began to hide those potatoes because Toga ate them all and only left a few crumbs and the occasional broken potato. Hid behind the living room curtains he continued eating the potatoes slowly so as not to make them crunch so loudly when he chewed them. After a few minutes of not finding the blonde, Dabai got tired. But he had an idea. If that's how you want to play he went to the refrigerator and grabbed the carton of strawberry milk that Toga loves and began to empty it into the sink. Not even five seconds passed when a knife grazed his face. Then Toga lunged at him to grab the milk, or what little was left of it, and locked himself in the bathroom with the potatoes and milk. All that happened and Amea didn't wake up. At the same time in another place, Kaminari, Bakugo and Kirishima were together playing video games while eating pizza. You know, I've heard rumors that this Dabai guy is still on the loose, Kirishima said, biting into the pizza. 
Don't even remind me. He hasn't gotten over it yet. Kaminari said, pressing the collar with the microphone, we should look for him. So that, revenge, revenge is never good. It kills the soul and poisons it. Kirishima said to which they both looked at him strangely. He pointed to the TV screen. It's the moral of this game. What a shitty game and moral, Bakugo said. Not for that. So that we can catch him. I have heard rumors that he is with that blonde girl Himiko Toga, Kaminari said getting up. If we organize ourselves well, we could catch both of them. Looks like you finally have a good idea, Pikachu. Thank you. But we should ask someone else for help. I propose half and half, not Midoriya. Do you want to catch him or listen to that nerd give a speech to try to change? Good point. Call him so we can meet tomorrow after Shoto was involved in their plan to capture his brother, sister-in-law, and niece. He had to agree to avoid raising suspicion, but he would be sabotaging them to help his family escape. Very good alpha team, Kaminari said pointing towards a whiteboard with the photos of their objectives, Dabai and Toga, but they did not have photos of Amea because they did not know that she existed, which relieved Shoto a little. These are our objectives and this is the entire area where they have been seen the last few years. Kaminari made a circle around the entire city, that's no use idiot, it's the whole damn city. Bakugo claimed, standing up and taking the marker I don't know if you know but that kendo girl was found dead. Well they found her body completely charred in an alley east of Najo Street so we should start there. Shoto swallowed saliva without being seen. His house was to the east, for now he could not send them a message because it would be suspicious. He had to wait for them to finish. They continued making various plans to intercept them together or separately, in which Shoto would have to betray them. On the other hand, Toga and Dabai had managed to enroll Amea in the daycare where Fayumi worked. She was not with her because of her age, but she always made sure she was well. The little blonde girl had a lot of fun at daycare. Playing with other girls, playing with more toys and stuffed animals, taking her quiet nap and even having snacks before lunch Fayumi always picked her up and took her home where her parents were waiting for her. At a certain point the money was starting to affect them since as time went by, the spending on Amea increased, and the hits with the league had decreased due to the great risk. If they were caught and separated from their daughter, they would have to find other methods to get more money but only between themselves too what if we robbed the Ayarazu family mansion? I heard that they spent too much on their daughter's funeral but they still have a great fortune, Toga said lying upside down in bed. Boring, Dabai said looking at a newspaper trying to find some way to earn more money. An advertisement caught his attention. Well, we could be delivery men, we still have the truck that we stole, it has to be of some use, it depends. What will we transport? Toga said sitting down like a normal person. Things, Dabai said without thinking about the matter. After a few minutes Fayumi brought Amea to them, and the girl hugged them and then went to sleep. But in the middle of the night she woke up scared. She felt that something bad was going to happen. She grabbed her teddy bear and went to her room. His parents. There he knocked on the door until they opened. Daddy, Amea hugged Dabai's leg when she saw him. What's up, shorty? I'm afraid. Can I sleep with you? The only scary thing in this house is your mother when she gets angry. Not even three seconds passed when Toga threw a slipper at her head. It didn't hurt be thankful I can't reach the knives, Toga said, putting on her shirt and lying down on the bed. Amea hurried and lay down between them, hugging each of their arms tightly so as not to let them go. The next day, they went to drop Amea off at the daycare. They had gotten a simple job, taking some things to a store in the center of the city, mostly food. When they delivered them, the owner noticed that some fruits came wet, he didn't give it a try. Very important and some of his employees put away the merchandise. Then he went to see the couple of villains, just one question, why do they come wet? Asked the owner, I fucked my girlfriend over those apples, and I'm watching how a girl with a horn is buying them. The owner stared at them, then at the girl, then at them. They have the guts for that. I will pay them double and hire them as my transporters. They both looked at each other confused. They looked at the owner who was wearing a shirt with the number 59 and his name tag said Astro you have serious problems, don't you? Dabai said raising an eyebrow. He didn't say anything else after he gave them the money and they both left completely confused. They had managed to get an income, and a pretty good one for a long time, but they didn't know that a certain group of heroes was very close to them. And most importantly, they hadn't noticed that their daughter was awakening her quirk. There were still no signs of where Dabai and Toga could be, but they were not going to give up so easily. After the information they obtained they managed to summarize their search area to two, five kilometers, and in that area was their home. Shoto looked at the map and knew he had to tell them to get out of there as quickly as possible. We'll go now, Bakugo said getting up and going to the door. Pikachu will go with half and half, I with Kirishima, will separate and we'll make a sign if we find them. Everyone nodded and left the house to capture the villains. For his part, Dabai had left the city with Shigaraki and Compress, so there were only Toga and Amea alone at home. There would be no problem if they didn't go out. Mommy, what's for dinner? 
Amaya asked, sitting next to her on the couch. I think your dad left something in the fridge. Toga got up and walked to the kitchen. She opened the fridge to see what Dabai left them. It must be a joke. It wasn't food. He left them a wad of bills so they could buy whatever they wanted. Put on your coat. We'll go to the store the blonde girl nodded and put on her black coat that was on a chair and they both went out. Shoto and Kaminari were walking a few blocks from the store where they planned to go. With how talkative Kaminari is, he was too quiet. Neither of them dared to break the ice for the moment their phones rang after receiving a message from Bakugo. There's no shit around here was the message that the explosive blonde sent them. Shoto looked at the message and was about to respond. Well, there isn't any here either. Kaminari put his arm in front of him. Shoto was confused looking at him but Kaminari had his eyes in front of him where he saw Toga enter the store with Ame. Emiko Toga. He whispered to himself and sent the address to Bakugo in Kirishima. And he has a girl. It must be his daughter Shoto didn't say anything. He tried to reach for his phone without Kaminari finding out. Unfortunately even though he sent him a warning, Toga forgot his phone at home inside the store. Toga held Amea's hand so she wouldn't run off to grab candies or chocolate. She would only buy what was necessary and they would return quickly. She grabbed a couple of juices and soft drinks, a couple of pizzas to cook in the oven and ice cream when they left she had a bad feeling and accelerated her pace without letting go of her daughter's hand. But a pair of discs stood in their way, completely surrounding them. Toga turned her head up and saw Kaminari pointing his finger at the discs. If he hadn't brought Amea he would have electrocuted her. He came down from the roof towards them with Shoto at his back. Sighed. Mommy, I'm scared. Amea clung to her mother's leg, scared by whoever was pointing at them. But then she turned her gaze to Shoto. You Uncle Shoto. Uncle, Kaminari was surprised to hear that. And walked away from Todoroki pointing at him. Do you know them? Shoto didn't say anything and stood in the middle of them, opening his arms as a shield so that Kaminari's lightning would hit him if he fired. Unfortunately for them, Bakugo and Kirishima arrived from the other street and looked at the whole scene confused. What the hell are you doing Kaminari? Bakugo shouted, Todoroki is not on our side. Meet this villain and her daughter. Both of them upon hearing that prepared to attack him. Shoto knew that he might not be able to beat all three of them at the same time especially since he could only use his eyes. But suddenly Toga stood next to her holding a knife in each hand. Amea went to hide behind some boxes in one of the nearby alleys. I will fight this blonde. Toga pointed the knife at Kaminari. Can you take care of the other two? Only with my eyes it will be difficult to defeat them. You have to kill them. Shoto opened his eyes when he heard that. Although he didn't want to accept it, Toga is right. If he lets them live they will betray him and take him away from Mina and his daughter. They didn't have time to think when Bakugo launched himself to attack him. He managed to make a barrier towards him which he dodged at the last second and Kirishima broke the ice ready to hit him. Tsk, Shoto dodged Kirishima's blows and on top of that he must dodge Bakugo's explosions. For their part, Toga and Kaminari were face to face without saying anything yet. Kaminari just took out the necklace with the microphone and showed it to them. Your damn boyfriend killed a very special girl for me. Don't worry, Toga licked the knife ready to kill him. You will meet her very soon Toga lunged to stab him in the neck, but Kaminari managed to dodge the attack and hit her in the belly, grabbing her by the head and throwing her to the ground. Toga stood up and threw the knife at his face. He barely managed to dodge it, but the knife cut his cheek causing it to bleed. Shit, Toga regretted having thrown it. Now she only had one and she couldn't lose it. She turned to see her daughter who was crying when she saw what her mother was going through. Don't take me away from her damn hero Kaminari shot him a small beam that made him drop the knife and scream in pain. Mommy, Amea cried more when she heard her screams. She didn't want them to hurt her anymore. Shoto was still in trouble fighting against them too. If only he had not lost his arm he could have more advantage. He threw another ice barrier at both of them and Bakugo made a hole in the middle with his technique which was losing strength. TCH, raccoon eyes, she's stupid for marrying you, Bakugo said, already annoyed by so much ice. The cold was weakening him. Maybe your damn daughter will become trash like Toga. Those words made Shoto angry with him. Insulting him didn't matter, he was already used to it. But insulting Mina and Yuzuru was too much since they were innocent of everything. He threw another barrier at him again but this one was different. It was more like a defensive than an offensive. By the time he dodged it, Shoto was no longer there. What the fuck? Ah, uh, Bakugo spit out blood as spikes of ice pierced his abdomen from behind. Shoto created the barrier as a distraction to surround him. D-damn half in. Every time he tried to move he only hurt himself more Kirishima forgot Todoroki and broke the spikes to save Bakugo. Who could barely stand up. Kaminari grabbed Toga's arms and put her against the ground and began to electrocute her until she lost consciousness. Amea just watched in terror as her mother slowly closed her eyes. She couldn't see that anymore. I think that's enough. Kaminari grabbed her by the hair and Toga could barely move. We'll go to the face. Kaminari let go of Toga and stepped back with smoke coming out of his mouth. It seems that he had used his quirk too much. But it wasn't that. It was something much worse. Uh. Kaminari screamed in pain. 
feeling like his entire body was on fire inside. Fire came out of his mouth and began to destroy his face. Not only his mouth, his nose, ears and eyes, the fire completely destroyed the blonde, leaving a burned corpse on the ground, Kaminari. Hiroshima shouted in shock seeing what happened. Bakugo was speechless as was Shoto. Togo was barely conscious but he saw everything that happened, D Dabai. It wasn't Dabai. There was no one else there. Amir ran out to hug her with all her strength while she cried. I don't want anyone to hurt you mommy. Toga could see the knife that had cut Kaminari's cheek in her daughter's hands. Her mouth had blood coming from the knife. Why you took her blood and her body burst into flames. Toga was surprised to see how her daughter's quirk worked. Amaya had been hiding her quirk from everyone. She had felt the need for blood a while ago. But she tried it on dead or frozen animals that Shigaraki bought and left in the fridge. They all ended up burned. She didn't want to tell her parents yet. But I had no choice Amaya helped Toga up and they left. Shoto was still trying to understand what happened. But he still had a rival to defeat, Kirishima. His ice had not hurt him so far and Toga was too weak to fight. He had the advantage but he knew that Bakugo would not last long without medical help. He had to decide between fighting and Bakugo dying or escaping with Bakugo and them disappearing. I guess I have no choice. Kirishima took Bakugo's shoulder about to leave. You don't have anything Kirishima turned his gaze to where a stapled hand that came out of a portal next to him grabbed him by the mouth and burned it, making him retreat. Even though he was hardened, it burned his vocal cords and trachea. Pathetic. Another hand appeared from another portal and grabbed his neck. After a few seconds he began to turn into dust. K. Kirishima. Pakugo on the ground just watched as his best friend died in front of him without him being able to do anything before Toga and Amea left the store. Shoto sent Dabai a message with their location. Kirijiri looked into the distance and told them when to put his hand to attack. Shoto approached Pakugo and gave him the final blow, destroying his head with his ice and everyone disappeared into the portal. Amea, still scared, lay down in her room in the lair while Toga rested next to her and Dabai tried to calm her down. Hirajiri warmed her a glass of milk. Shoto returned home without saying anything to Mina and Shigaraki only crossed out his murder notebook. The name explosive bitch. Sorry for not telling you. You don't have to apologize. You saved your mom. Dabai hugged her carefully and kissed her head. And that's better than nothing. Now rest. Amea smiled and snuggled into her mother's arms. Dabai covered them both with his jacket and let them rest. He returned to the bar with Shigaraki and Kirijiri and sat on a chair. It seems like it's over, isn't it Dabai? Shigaraki said looking at Dabai and giving him some darts. Not yet. There is one monster left to eliminate. Dabai threw a dart that hit a photo, said photo is of Endeavor. 